This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hope you guys are able to hear me and able to see my screen, right? Hello? Yes, Bobby. Yes. Yeah, yes. Sir. Okay, thanks. So, before I start the training, let me introduce myself. Okay, my name is Bobby. I have overall uh, 10 years of experience. I started my career in a BAP, SAP ABAP. Then I moved to SAP UFI and Fury. Uh, from past four years, I'm working on various implementation projects on SAP UI5 and Fury, and also currently working on the SAP Cloud Platform on the new environment as well as the Cloud Foundry environment, and also working on the Internet of Things and machine learning. So this is what which I'm currently working. So that is my experience on working experience and coming to my training experience. From past um, three years, I'm giving a training on uh, SAP UI5, Fury, and Vodata. I have completed 19 batches and uh, that is related to my training. Okay, so let's start about the train today's uh, demo. Okay, so what is the agenda? Topics which I'll be covering in today's training is SAP evaluation. So starting from the date which SAP has started to till date, what evaluation has come that I'm going to cover in today's demo and theory overview. Okay, why theory has come into the picture that I'm going to cover in the theory overview and what is SAP Fury? Okay, so what exactly the SAP Fury is that I'm going to cover? What is SAP UFI? Why we are developing the applications, web applications using SAP UFI that I'm going to cover? And what is OData? Why we are exposing the data from the SAP system to the outside world? Okay, using O data protocol, why we are doing that, that I'm going to cover. And what is SAP NetWeaver Gateway I'm going to cover? And also, I'm going to give a demo of the SAP UFN O data. And use case demo I'll be giving today's agenda. So, that is the agenda which I'll be covering. So, let's go further. Okay, so as I mentioned, evaluation of SAP user interface. So, what evaluation has come into the picture? from the starting to till date that we will be discussing okay please uh, anyone tell me why sap has not uh, developed its web application instead of it having to its own gui gui please anyone tell me why sap has went its own gui instead of developing the web application Anyone please tell me because because SAP was born on the SAP started from 1970 because SAP was started in 1970. So during that time there was not browser was not there. Okay, so that is the reason SAP has developed its own GUI. Clear. So during that time, okay, during that time, what is the architecture which they are following is okay. <coughs> Okay, so they okay during 1970s. What is the architecture they're following? Is that they have SAP GUI, okay, and they have the application server. Okay, so now from the SAP GUI, okay, okay, it has a send the request, okay, and from the application server, it used to get the response. Means this is SAP GUI. Okay, and this is the application server. Okay, then from the SAP GUI, a request used to go. And from application server, a response has come. Okay, suppose you are trying to open SC11 T code. Okay, it goes to the sends a request to the application server and it used to get the response back and the transaction code opens. Okay, so whatever this uh, sending the request and the response is was not which what some protocol need to be followed means whatever we send the data to the third party. Okay, it will be in packets and we know it's nothing but a protocol. Okay, means they're using some protocol to send the request to the application server and get the response back. So what is the protocol they're following is 
DIG protocol. So during 1970s, okay, what is the protocol which SAP is following to send the request and get the response back from the application to server to the GUI is DIG. What it stands for is it is Dynamic Information Action Gateway, and it is a protocol. Okay, and also the application server understands the DAG protocol and responds the DAG, and the GUI understands the DAG, and finally we get the results. So this is what during 1970s SAP started this architecture. Okay, now in 1990s, okay, okay, browser revolution has started. Okay, browser re revolution has started. Let's come back to the PPT. Okay, so browser revolution has started, and that is called the ITS has been introduced. What is that? Internet transaction services. Okay, so now during this one, okay, what is that ITS has come into the picture because people started using browser. Okay, ITS is nothing but a, it's a browser based application. Instead of GUI, we can open in the browser. Clear? So what I was telling, right, from the SAP GUI, it was 1970, but during 1990s, browser revolution was started. So SAP has introduced related to that ITS. It is a browser based application and instead of opening in the GUI, we can open in the browser. Clear? So what protocol is used to interact with the browser in the application? Of course, everyone knows the brow to interact the browser. Obviously, it understands the HTTP protocol only. And, and this is a big challenge to the SAP because, because SAP GUI and application server understands DAG protocol. Okay. Whereas a browser understands the HTTP protocol. Okay. So now what solution SAP has given to that? Okay. So now SAP has come up with another new architecture. Okay, they have the SAP GUI. Okay, they have the application server and they have the browser here and they have introduced one called converter. Okay, what is that? This is SAP GUI. Okay, and this is the application server during 1990s. And this is the converter. And this is the browser. Okay. So now browser understands the HTTP protocol only. Okay. So now what does browser when we are trying to open the any transaction code in the browser? Okay. So what it does, right? It sends the request to the this converter. Okay. This converter will this is what is the request is http request okay it okay it converts okay http to the dig okay and it sends to the application server okay then this application servers will send to the gui and now gui sends the response back okay and from application server it it sends response and from converter again it converts the dig to the http and what it does it sends response back to the browser and the gui it will be open in the transaction will be in the open in the browser clear so here if you observe here this will be in the dig protocol and this will be in the dig protocol and this will be in the http request Okay, so this is what during 1990s, okay, where browser revolution had started and SAP has introduced concept called ITS, that is Internet Transaction Services. Okay, okay, so then what is the disadvantage of using this one? Okay, okay, why, 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 why SAP has moved from here this to the another level that is, okay, so that is BSP and WebDIN Pro. Okay, so what is that which they went? Okay, so now, now in during 1990s, okay, and they're happy to use browser instead of GE because of look and feel. 
okay in 1990s they had to means during the time they had to install the its web server separately and and then only they can use the transaction codes that is one disadvantage and also its mainly works like gui and some transactions only it means for transaction means you can just open instead of gui you can just open the tra gui transaction codes in the browser that's it okay and also it is for not all the transaction code is for limited transaction modes it means for transactions only so that is a reason sap has come up a new architecture that is called next level they went they want to develop their own application so that is the reason they went to the bsp and web dim pro applications okay during that time during that time the combined this application server and the converter into one that is called the icf that is internet communication manager okay internet communication manager is taught what is it in icf stands for okay internet communication manager clear so this is what which has been introduced during nine during 90 during when the bsp has come into the picture okay when the webdin pro has this come into the picture okay so now icf internet communication okay manager or internet communication framework okay it is a framework which contains internet communication framework where total combination of application server and this converter into one they made it called as icf internet communication manager or framework okay during this time okay there where webdin pro and bsp has come into the picture okay where webdin pro yes we can develop easily applications okay if you want to develop sales order application then easily we can develop because best part is then webdin pro is minimum code and fast development what is that minimum code and fast development is using webdin pro applications okay very very easy we can develop but the disadvantage of using webdin pro is it is client side validations and problem with webdin pro is okay it does not it does not have the ui it does not look good when we compare to the other java and dotnet application the ui looks so good but when you look at the webdin pro the ui doesn't look good and also the beautifying ui is not that much flexible okay for example uh, means the ui does not look good and the beautifying also it's not possible using is webdin pro so now what happened so now for example and also another advantage is it supports only in the desktop it will not support in the mobile as well as in the tablet of the webdin pro applications okay now now what is another disadvantage of using a webdin pro is it is does not follow the client server architecture what do you mean by client server architecture okay it means you have a okay you have a server okay and you have a here client okay so now when but when you took when you take the webdin pro applications okay you don't have concept of client and server this is the client everything sits in the server only that is sap about sap server okay so now for example you are trying to do a validation at the rate gmail.com i want to check only at the rate exist or not every time from the browser you think this is the browser okay so this is the browser you need to touch to the server every time every time you need to hit to the server because because there is no client and the server here at all and that will hit the lot of performance issues but so that is the reason sap is one more disadvantage of using webdin pro understood okay so now now let's come back to the another one is called bsp what is that bsp stands for the business service pages what is that business server pages okay okay so now yes using bsp okay okay because we don't have that much flexibility of ui in webdin pro but in bsp it has inbuilt html libraries 
where they had given lot of user interfaces yes it looks good okay people started using it where there is a flexibility to have the bs beautifying view we have the flexibility and also we can develop the applications but what is the drawback of using bsp is fast development is not possible means you cannot do very fastly it's not possible using bsp so that is the reason that is the reason they have come up with the concept called sap wi what is that sap wi what is that concept they have come up it is sap gui what wi what is that sir? it stands for web ui wi stands for web user interface what is that web user interface what is it means it is a combination of webdin pro plus bsp okay so now what is the drawback we have seen webdin pro that it is the what i can say the ui is not that much good okay and it will okay ui is not that much flexible in everything but so no, but what is the what is the uh, what i can say the what is the disadvantage of using bsp alone is that fast development is not possible so that is the reason they combined this both uh, what is that the bsp and webdin pro they came up with a concept called wi web user interface which is a combination of bsp plus webdin pro by using webdin pro i can get data easily by using the okay by using the uh, what you can say the bsp yes i have all the lot of html libraries what exactly i am saying that combination of bsp plus webdin pro will give flexibility on the user interface and develop the applications easily and also people started using the sap crm and also it is so popular in the market the user interface was good and extensibility also we can extend the controls also we can extend the ui also. also but what is the problem is the customizing is not that much easy in wi because there are a lot of bundles of the layers we need to work on it and as a wrapper it's very very difficult to work on this so that is the reason so that is the reason and also one more disadvantage of using bsp animational kind of stuff is not possible that is the reason sap has come out from sap wi and they came up with sap ui5 that is sap fury so this is the this is the evolution of sap user interface sap starting from 1970 to till date okay this is the evolution of sap clear guys any questions anyone have any questions No. Okay. Thanks. So now let's move to what is SAP Fury. Okay. In today's business environment, okay, users face many challenges in hunt for timely to update any accurate informations. In addition, accessible to this information any time, anywhere, it that makes their business faster. and smarter decisions what exactly it means so in today's everyone were having mobile smartphones and everything and then okay they got habituated to use that phones and everything and but when you look at sap gui you can go and open only in the with desktop applications okay you cannot get any information your mobile to take the decisions faster and make your business okay make your business for, take smarter decisions so to overcome that sap introduced a concept called sap fury clear the answer is sap fury so now what is the origin of sap fury has come into picture okay so a research was conducted and it found that most of the sap users okay 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 uses the applications okay related to the employee interactions manager and employee interactions such as leave request travel request etc okay okay the gui has sap gui has more than 3 3 lakh screens with various functions so what sap has decided it very frequently used applications but they started sap how sap fury started is which the end users which they are using very frequently applications okay and they are started converting from the normal gui to the sap fury that is how the origin of sap was started fury started clear guys any questions no okay. 
So now what is SAP Fury? So people think SAP Fury, it is a technology. Is it a technology? Anyone, guys, SAP Fury is a technology? No. Uh, no. Yes, it is not a technology. Then what is it? It is a platform? Is it a platform? No, SAP Fury, it is not a platform. Then what exactly is SAP Fury? It is a user interface provided by SAP Fury, SAP software. What is that user interfaces? Means whenever you are saying it is an SAP Fury application, it should be responsive. What do you mean by responsive? When you develop an application, it automatically should support desktop. It automatically should support tab. It automatically should support mobile. So that is called the responsive. So then it is a Fury application. It is open. You develop your Fury application in any technology. Okay, but you need to find you need to follow the guidelines of SAP Fury, then it is SAP Fury application. It is open. That's the reason it is open. Personalization settings. When you develop the application, the end user has to do some personalization settings. What do you mean by personal? It has its it, it creates its own theme. Okay, it creates its value fields. It can hide the fields for one user to another. So those type of personalization settings you can do in SAP Fury. So finally, what you want me to tell you, right? SAP Fury, it is not a technology. It is not a, pla uh, it is not a platform. It is just a guidelines to develop the user interface. So what is that guidelines? What is the design means guidelines means design principles to develop the user interface to say, hey, this is SAP Fury application. What are those things is one is role based, responsive, simple, coherent and delightful. Clear? Sorry, guys. OK, so what do you mean by role based? It is designed for you. Your needs and how you work means until the application is assigned to your user ID, you will not able to see the application. So that is the reason it is role based. What is responsive? As I mentioned in the previous slide, when you develop the SAP Fury application, it should automatically support all the devices that is desktop, mobile, as well as tablet. So then it is SAP Fury application. And what is simple? See, if you look at the VS01 transaction code in the GUE ME20. There are a lot of tabs, lot of lot of fields and also thing. Bah. So that looks more complex to as a user to understand. But when you say the SAP Fury application, you should only display the important fields so that the end user can focus on, on the important. So that is the reason it is called SAP Fury application, only focusing on important fields. What is coherent? means provides once fluid seamless experience means for example if you go to me 21 creating the uh, what you can say material uh, sorry purchase order number the way the look the ui looks different when you look at va01 the way the ui looks different okay so what i want to tell you that when you are talking about all fury application of creation of all the things it will, be, will follow only one template so the end user can will not get confused so that is the reason provides one fluid seamless experience clear and also at last at last is delightful okay makes an emotional connection means you should develop the fury application in such a way the end user will feel have an emotional connection so that he can work on that applications so if you follow this all these design principles then your application is sap fury you develop the application in any technology but if you follow the all these design principles then it is called sap fury application Clear, guys. Anyone have any questions? Uh, no. Okay, thanks. So now, what is SAP Fury? Okay, where we will open the apps. Okay, FA, SAP Fury has provided, SAP has provided a concept called Fury Launchpad. What does that mean? For example, when you open a mobile, you will be seeing all the apps, right? In the same way, SAP has provided a SAP Fury Launchpad. When you open the Launchpad, you will be seeing it as a tile. 
okay when you click on the tile you will be application will be opening so that is the reason sap fury launchpad provides an end user an entry point to access all the fury applications in the role base what do you mean by role base until this tile is assigned to your user id because you will log into the sap fury launchpad with your user id and password until you access until you log in it okay you will until it is assigned this tile is assigned to your user and you will not able to see in your fury launchpad so that is the reason it's a role based applications and also it is user friendly manner using tiles clear and tiles will be some tiles will be static and some tiles will be dynamic what do you mean by dynamic suppose you are applying your manager you have a fifth uh, time sheet to approve it so you will be seeing when you log into the fury launchpad right away in the tile you will be seeing the count hey that the uh, things which i need to approve it so this type of tiles are called dynamic tiles clear the so what do you mean by real time application information It means you some you will be seeing some tiles i'll be showing later you will be seeing the real time data on the tile itself where what is your business is happening with the charts okay so those type of they are called kpis key process interface okay so what is search you can also search the apps so that is the reason <coughs> so that is the reason this is sap fury okay a launchpad provides an end user to access the applications clear so now how it looks in the tablet okay this is the tablet how it looks in the desktop how it looks in the mobile that is what which i want to tell you so now what is sap ui5 as of now we discussed about sap fury but somewhere we need to develop the applications right so we will be developing our application using sap ui5 okay what do you mean by sap ui5 it is a tool where we can with the technology where you will be developing your fury applications it is open source anyone can go ahead and download it the libraries and you can go ahead and go to install the clips and download the libraries you can start developing sap of it's open source browser compatibility so when you take it javascript okay when you take it javascript when you develop any for example a dialog box okay so that time so that time the dialog box looks in google chrome different but when you execute the same thing in the internet explorer the dialog box looks different but when you develop the sap ui5 the dialog box in sap ui5 all the browsers okay it will look the same that is called the browser compatibility okay any device when you develop the sap ui5 application it automatically supports desktop it automatically supports tablet it automatically supports mobile so this is the design which follows the guidelines of sap fury so that is the reason we are using sap ui5 application to develop the few we are using the sap ui5 to develop the fury application clear oh, it has very powerful theming and branding and also the efficiency is good and performance is very good because it follows client and server architecture clear any questions until now yes uh, it is uh, not specific to this one but is it possible to develop uh, uh, fury apps for uh, ecc system where we don't yes, have if you have day? if you have the service pack uh, service pack 04 okay 4.0 okay you can uh, you can develop the applications so uh, for for that do we need to pay any licensing fee to ec uh, sap service pack i uh, related to the basis person will be the right person to answer that question okay but if you have the normal ecc it doesn't require the s4 hana all the free applications okay you can also develop your own custom applications but uh, you should have some service pack uh, sp pack 4.0 but related to the cost uh i have no idea i need to check okay got it thank you okay any more questions guys yeah i have a question uh, yeah, that uh, that uh, uh, what uh, kind of difference between sap ui5 and uh, uh, the fury app actually this is from okay okay confusion see, actually yeah yeah i'll tell see sap fury is nothing but it's a guidelines okay hey i have certain guidelines okay you develop the technology you develop the application web application any technology but if you follow the guidelines of my uh, thing and it is a fury application is it clear 
it is just a guidelines okay, okay. Is, is this not a uh, sap tools is just a guidelines correct uh, guidelines for the user interface yes to develop the user interface to develop the application web application is it clear yeah okay coming to the sap ui5 it is a technology like an abap okay abap is a server side program okay well like an abap okay sap ui5 it is a technology to develop the web applications okay using this sap ui5 technology we are developing the web applications which follows the guidelines of sap fury then it is a sap fury application is it clear yes now it's clear okay thanks any more questions guys okay so now what are the components of sap ui5 application so what is sap ui5 and what is o data and what is netweaver gateway this all sap ui5 we have seen to develop the web applications what is o data we are using the okay we are exposing the data from the sap system to the outside world using the o data protocol what is o data stands for open data protocol okay so what is netweaver gateway using this service okay we are we are we are generating the url to expose the data of o data clear don't worry i'll be explaining in the use case how we will be achieving let's move to the first architecture how it looks i have here sap ui5 okay so this is the sap ui5 clear now i have a here sap system whether it can be ecc or s4 hana clear okay so now i am i have the ui will be here so now i have here input fields okay so now now but the data is sitting here in the sap system here the debab data dictionary whatever may be the data is sitting here okay now i want this data to display in my ufi application this is client okay and this is obviously this is server clear so now i want this data to display in in my sap ufi application okay so for that sap has given the gateway okay okay so now here i'll be creating a gateway in the gateway i'll be creating a project and i'll be creating entity type i'll be creating entity set and which will be getting the service i'll be registering okay so now here okay here i'll be writing a, a bap code okay to get the data from this one okay and which will this service okay will be generating okay will be generating a o data service and that i'll be exposing it okay so what i want to tell you right so now from sap ufi i'll be sending the request okay and here there is an abap code which will be executed okay what does it does this abap code will fetch the data from the tables okay and that will be exposing here means for this we need to follow the protocol what is the protocol which we are following o data protocol what it understands http request so i'm sending the request from sap ufi and i'm getting the response so what is the protocol which you are following is o data protocol clear guys so whenever we generate this project okay it will create dpc okay and mpc classes in the dpc class we will be writing the abap code to get the data from these tables and this service will generate a o data service and will send to the sap ufi that is what which we are going to see now clear guys so now let me go to my server okay i am just uh, logging into the my server into the sap login screen
I'm going to the T code SC11 where I'm going to show you one table. Okay, so now this is the table. Okay, which has the this data table I'm talking about. Okay, now this has few fields. Okay, so now I'm going to have some it has some data. This is the data which I'm going to expose in my SAP UI Fi application. Clear? So now I will go to the T code. Now this is clear over, right? Now I'll be going to the T code SCGW. Okay. Now I'll be creating this project entity type, entity set. Okay. All I'll be doing that. Okay. Then I'll be going to the SCGW. <coughs> okay. And I'm going to create a project. Clear? <coughs> Okay, now here I'm right clicking on the data model. I'm going to create an entity type. Okay, then I'm going to create an entity set. That is what which I'm doing here. You can see I'm creating entity type and entity set. Now, okay, I'll be going under the property section. Let's not go into detail how it is happening. Understand my intention is to you guys to understand the flow clear so now i'm just what are the fields which i'm going to expose okay then i'm going to copy it then i'm going to or how many fields it is six okay i'm giving a primary key and i'm giving a data type as edm string most of the time we always use uh, edm string as data type okay so now i'm just copying it then I'm giving to all the fields same data type. Okay, so these are the fields which I'm exposing this data to the outside world. That is the reason I need to add those fields. So now I'm generating this project which I created. So that will create MPC and DPC classes. Then I'm clicking on continue. Then I'm clicking local object. Clear, guys? So now uh, I, this will, as I said, this will generate your DPC in MPC classes. Okay, so now I'm going to the runtime artifacts. This I mentioned. So this is DPC and MPC. So this is what which DPC and MPC and you have a service also. Yes, this is a service. It is created. Now I'm right clicking on the DPC and go to the BAP workbench. Okay, now here. Okay, for that entity type for that entity set I created right for that there will be five methods will be created. Clear. So I'm redefining. Let's not go in detail. What are this one? Okay. Let's. I'm just redefining this method. Okay. I'm now. I'm going to write the ABAP code. Okay. To get the data from these tables. Clear. So let me get the code because in my training I'll be writing the code. So this is the demo. I'm just getting the code. Clear, guys. One second. <coughs> Okay. Let me get the code. Sorry, I was that is a wrong document. I hope you guys are able to see my screen. Okay, so now what I'm doing it, if you look at this simple, I'm getting the data from that custom table, uh, which I've seen and I'm putting in the internal table. Okay, then what I'm doing, I'm just uh, get, I'm putting into the internal table and appending to the ET underscore entity set. Okay, where ET underscore entity set is my export to parameter. Now I'm just activating this one. Okay, so now ET underscore entity set is my export to parameter. One second, I'm just uh, 
Okay. So now, if you scroll down, you can see ET underscore entity test set is my export to parameter. When you click type, okay, when you get inside, what are the fields which we added, which we added in the property section, okay, which we added in the property section that is, is going to appear here. You can see. These are the fields which we added. So that is what which I am sending into the back to that structure. Clear, guys? Okay, so now I have written the code. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put an external breakpoint to this one. Clear? So now I'll be coming back and I'll be taking that service which have created. So now I'll copying this service. Okay, now I'll be going to the T code slash and develop maintain service. What is that? Slash O slash I develop and slash main service. Okay, so this is the T code where we'll go to the net we were Come back to my architecture. Okay, now we created the gateway project using SCGW. We created entity type, we created entity set, and we got the service. We have written the ABAP code to get the data from the tables in the DPC class method. And now we need to register the service. This will, when we register the service, this will generate a URL. What is that URL? O data URL. So where we are going to register, we are going to register in slash I main develop nd slash main underscore service t code okay now i'm clicking on add service button okay so now now i'm going to give local let's not go in detail what is that local and everything and i'm just giving my service name and press enter okay then i'll be selecting the service and click on add selected service button and this service is registered Okay, once the service is registered and you can use that service. Okay, so now I'm just clicking continue. Okay, so this service is registered. Okay, so now I'm just clicking on filter button. What are the service which are registered? I'm trying to fetch it. Okay, here we have options to call browser and gateway client. Let me click on the SAP gateway client. Okay, then click on entity set. Okay, now, now execute the service. This is for entity set. Okay, we have yes, our code has been triggered. Don't understand, just understand the flow. That's enough. Okay, this I'm just getting the continue. I'm just executing, and the data is coming here. This is the data which is sitting in this table. So now you can see you have a, another option that is called the call browser. You can see call browser. Click on the call browser. Then this is now you can see the data is exposed with the URL. You are just entering the username of password of your SAP system. So you're opening, means data is exposed to the outside world. You're able to open this data in the outside world. Now I'm going to give this entity set. Okay, so now I'm pasting it. Okay, now again, you can see the debugger has been triggered. Okay, now I'm just continuing. And you can see it is display now now this service this service is has been generated come back to the architecture and this is the url which is got generated sorry now this one i'm going to use my sap ufi application anyone have any questions until now anyone have any questions until now yeah, this uh, CGW is for all common O data services for developing entity type and entity set. Or is there any? Yes, plan? yes, yes. This is the where we, uh, we the common T code where we'll develop for all projects. So means what all projects exactly? See, we have another option called ABAP CDS views. Okay, you go to the HANA studio, you give the annotation at the rate odata.publish, that would also will be created in odata service. I'm showing one way of doing it. Okay. Clear? Yeah, thank okay. you. Thanks. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? Uh, you have explained uh, uh, about DPC class. So what is the purpose of MPC? Correct. 
yeah so the, the abbreviation for the dpc is data provider class whatever the data which is flowing okay runtime data that's the reason we write the bab code coming to the mpc class a model provider class what are the fields which we are defined in this section you can see in this section will be under the mpc okay now if you observe go to the bab workbench and let me bring it and then uh, this is the I'm just clicking this is the entity set which we define and if you see et underscore entity set okay et underscore entity set type is what underscore mpc okay so all the field names which we defined internal tables work areas everything will be under the mpc class is it clear okay we need not do any declarations inside the mpc class it is automatically done Correct. It will automatically, yes, it will automatically will be there available when you have created the properties. Okay. When we create the entity set, the fields. Okay. No, when you yeah. See, if you look at this, when you create the properties, these field names, it will automatically add as an MPC in classes as a field. Okay. Names. So the okay. query all all time the query will be only in the DPC class and in mm -hmm. the DP DPC underscore ext. Correct, because DPC is a parent class and DPC underscore EXT is an extension class. Yeah, extension. Okay. Extension. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? Okay. So now, now what we do, right? We'll develop the application in SAP WebID and we'll try to expose it in SAP UIFI application. Oh, let me get the user ready one second to log in into the sap user ready i'll just i need to stop sharing yeah i'll just you guys are able to see my screen right now Yes. Okay, thanks. So now we got the OData data service URL. Okay. So now where we log into the SAP Web ID to develop the SAP UIFI applications. So now I'm just creating a project. Let's not understand what exactly in this project. Let's understand the flow. Okay. Okay. I'm just creating a folder called web app under that i'm just i'm bringing some files to connect to the backend so let's not discuss uh, what exactly it is because this is just to connect to the backend we'll keep it okay so now we whenever we create any sap ufi application we need to create three things will come into the picture one is index.html because because browser understands the html okay whatever we develop their application we develop the application in the for the browser to display in the browser so that is a reason we are using index.html because the browser understands the html there is no interpreter between the browser and the html so finally whatever we develop the application we always deploy into the index.html as it is a demo i'm just copying and pasting it the code but generally in my training i'll be writing each line of the code clear so what i'm doing here okay let's not get into detail i'm just calling my xml view from using this statement so now let's create folder called view and another folder called controller so the view he in the view i'm creating the app.view.xml okay so in this uh, i'll be providing whatever the ui means what the input field select and box table can everything order related to the ui i'll be using in the app dot i'll be developing in the ui that is app dot view dot xml okay so now in this controller 
controller.js okay i'll be writing the logic what need to be displayed okay like like we call it as javascript logic will be displaying that is that app.controller.js js stands for the con javascript okay like like for example if you want to validate the fields if you want to move from one page to another page if you want to do whatever the data which you got from the backend system again you need to do some processing logic so those type of things will be putting in the app.controller.js clear so whenever we have the project we have three things which we need to consider okay so now let's go and copy the app.controller.js clear now now if you create here if you see here i'm defining the model okay in this model that is o data model where whatever the thing which i have exposed up to service i have to bring i should not bring entity set okay up to the service i need to copy it okay i need to paste it here clear i pasted the service okay i'm saving it so now what i'm doing i'm defining this o data model i'm putting into the o data model o model then i'm setting this model to the view because what is the view app dot view because whatever the controller which i'm calling from my view only i'm calling so obviously i'm setting my model i'm setting this o data model which i got to my view because by using this statement i'm calling my controller okay so obviously it belongs to the view now what i am doing i have to give my entity set name what is my entity set name this is my entity set name copy this one and in you are planning to display the data in the table format okay so that is the reason you are giving a table control very simple table okay now what are the column names you have to display in your table you need to just mention the column name see how simple it is i'm just giving column text and whatever the data which you want to display you have to display in the column list item cells item data so you need to just give the field names which you got from this one so you can see product name you have to give product name and you need to put it in the braces because you are doing binding quantity and you are doing quantity that's it now what you do right click or you can double click on index.html okay then you can just click on execute okay so now what will happen let's see so now you can see it got triggered a breakpoint okay and i'm just click on continue okay then again let's click on continue and you see the data is coming so now coming back to the architecture okay so yes we use this url in our sap ui fi and we have displayed the data anyone have any questions anyone have any questions anyone have any questions clear guys understood the concept yeah. Right. Uh, so do uh, the code whatever you have added it's all manually we have to feed or any template will be available just to insert only the necessity uh, necessary uh, fields yes it's all the code templates are there templates are there yes okay. because so you can go to the file new okay. project from template okay and you can have a lot of uh, templates which you can use okay. you can see there we need to not write any sap ufi code we need to just bind the o data service the template means is a uh, fury launch pad is like no 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 fury launch pad is different and templates are different what sap has divided right sap has given uh, its own template okay so that i can use this template and you can just bind it to the template and it will display this templates are also developed by sap ufi only got it yeah okay yeah thank you yeah and also you we can get a, even you can see there is a quick start layout okay it is doesn't mean that like a batch 20 quick start okay then whatever i created manually it will create automatically the entire project and also you have the drag and drop the controls also 
clear? Is I think yeah, I answered your question. Uh, yes. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? No questions. Okay. Then let's move to the next. So now you understood what is SAP UI5, what is OData, and what is SAP Netweaver Gateway Service. Right? So now let's move to the what are the technical skills required? Okay. We required a minimum knowledge on HTML5. It's not required total knowledge. Okay. Yes, we required CSS. What we do in CSS, right? It is okay. What are the fonts? Okay, to specify the layout of the web pages, we will we will CSS like fonts, colors, background colors, anything we can we can use CSS. JavaScript obviously JavaScript is going to keep here keep uh, sorry to pay key role okay so what exactly we use javascript because what are the validations in the ui if you want to move from one page to another page if you want to write any logic we need to change we will be using javascript okay json format is the format where we will convert the we get the data in the json format to display it sap ui5 yes we required a sap ui5 technology because that is where we develop the applications Development tools where we develop, we can develop the SAP UFI and Eclipse as well as SAP Web Adding. So, even for example, from uh, we required a, obviously, I showed you the back end OData service. Okay, for that, we required a basic app app knowledge, some functional module knowledge, OData knowledge, SAP Netweaver gateway services. As I said, we can also develop the OData service using ABAP CDS views, SAP Fury. So, these are the things uh, which are skills required, and all these topics I'll be covering in my training clear okay so now let's come back to detailed course of my training okay so now i'll be sending this uh, recording video as well as this uh, um, link uh, where you can uh, see the demo also once again okay and you can see this is uh, i have overall uh, 10 years of experience and from past three years i'm giving training and you can also go through the youtube link where you can see the demo and also there is a linkedin link where my previous students has given me the feedback you can also go through it okay so you can reach me at mobile and as well as mail and as well as whatsapp number okay and coming to the fee structure before let's go to the fee structure let's go to the uh, what are the course details okay so now i'll be uh, i'll be starting with introduction then i'll move to the html5 then i will start and i'll go to the css okay then i'll start javascript then these are the topics which i'll be covering in my sap ui5 okay so total these are the topics which i'll be covering in my sap ui5 then i'll be moving to the sap fury okay and these are the topics which i'll be covering in sap fury and i'll be going sap fury elements that is abap cds with you annotations these are the topics and sap netweaver gateway using odata these are the topics which i'll be covering and also if people who does not have this is not part of my training but i am if people does not have any abap knowledge also they want to learn it so okay but i have the part of abap also sap abap where i'm covering basic abap and some reusable concepts, debugging, reports, oops, ABAP and ABAP baddies. So this by regular batch will start with uh, uh, not with ABAP because I'm not getting much people. So I'll be starting with uh, uh, what you can say. Uh, let me go to the previously. Okay, so we will start with SAP UI5 Fury, Fury Elements, O Data. That is my regular batch starts. If people who are does not have a BAP, I will be treating them as separately. Okay, so now coming back to the highlights. Yes, after completion of my training, I will be having a real time project development where I will be explaining the what are the real time projects which I have worked. I will be explaining it the PPT of the output and how the code has been developed. I will be explaining after the completion of the training. Obviously, you will be having recording sessions with view access for six months. Once the class is over daily, I will be uploading the recording video in the drive where you will be having view access for six months. Okay, you can do payment to installments. Coming to the server access, it is not of my part of my the training fees that will be covered separately. And I'll be providing a study material on SAP UI5, Fury, OData. And also I'll be 
developing the applications first i'll start developing sap ufa application in eclipse and later i'll move to the sap web id okay then every friday i'll be giving exercises based on the topic which i covered on that week and once the training is completed i'll be providing interview questions and answers on sap ui5 and fury o data okay and every day okay what are the programs which i'm explaining during my training there's nothing you guys need to be written you need to just focus on my training i'll be putting the programs ppt is what i'm explaining everything in the drive where you will be having download access clear guys now coming to the uh, course and fees yes for the who have the abap knowledge they'll come under this section one that is uh, i'll be covering sap ui5 fury fury elements o data netweaver gateway abap cds use annotations html5 css and javascript that will be total will be 50 hours i'm charging 10000 rupees and those who does not have abap knowledge i'll be covering sap abap i'll take them as separate abap oops abap that i'll be charging 15000 and those who have sap ufa knowledge they want to learn abap that will be coming under in this section 3 i'll be charging 2000 rupees 8000 rupees and those who cannot join the online training because of various reasons i'll be having the recording videos separately i'll be providing to them only recording videos so these are the fees related to that clear and also as a mention you go to the linkedin you can also go and see my uh, feedback of my previous students uh, okay as i mentioned that like as i mentioned you can see my feedback how what feedback they have given here you can go here and uh, yeah you can go i'll provide i already directly i provided direct link to get access but i am showing you guys okay so now you can see under the recommendation section okay you can see various uh, around 24 people are have provided the feedback related to my previous trainings clear guys anyone have any questions anyone have any questions okay 